Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's talk about uh, systems of equations, well, in general. I mean, systems of equations which do not really fall into some specific category, like linear or, or quadratic or something. Um, they are general, so you can expect anything, uh, but you still have to deal with this somehow. Well, um, there are certain particular types of systems uh, which you still can solve. And uh, there is no general recipe for general systems of equations. Um, it's always a specific uh, approach which you might actually take to solve this or that equation. And to find this approach is actually uh, the act of creativity, ingenuity, guessing, if you wish. Um, but again, this is basically all about this course. I'm trying to, um, to give certain tools for you to, to develop your creativity and ingenuity and, and, and even the guessing uh, ability. Um, so here are a few systems of equations which do not fall into any previous category and uh, they are still solvable and the question is basically to find the right approach. Um, obviously the more systems like that you will solve the better your chances are to solve something in the future related to, or even not related to mathematics because it's just a general development of these qualities of being able to find your way in an unknown territory. All right, so here they are. System number one, uh, p square root of q minus q square root of p equals six, p square root of p minus q square root of q equals 19. Well, as you see, it's completely uh, different type of uh, system of equations. So, what can be done in this particular case? Well, nobody likes radicals, nobody likes square roots or any kind of roots, right? So, I think the first thing which comes to mind is to have a substitution. What kind of substitution? Well, obviously, square root of p might be x, square root of q might be y, in which case p is equal to x squared and q is equal to y squared, right? Now, does it make our life easier? Well, in a way, yes, because now we have p times square root of q is actually x squared y minus q, which is y squared x equals to 6, and uh, p... Uh, Square root of p is actually x cubed minus y cubed equals to 19. So, now, is it better? To tell you the truth, it looks better. And why it looks better? Because it's just polynomial. Granted, it's not quadratic, but it's still kind of polynomial. So it's easier than to, to deal with these square roots, etc. Now, what can be done about this? Look at this, it's kind of symmetrical, right? So, um, what I can see right from this is that this can be represented as if I will factor out x, y, I will have x minus y equals to 6, right? And this is also can be factored out x, y, and I have x squared plus x, y plus y squared equals 19. If you don't remember this formula, you can actually go back to one of my previous lectures on uh, induction, mathematical induction. One of the problems which I present there is exactly the representation or of a to the power of n minus b to the power of n as a minus b times some polynomial of n minus first degree. All right. Now, why is this better? Well, here is why. Now, I can make another substitution, namely, x minus y can be u, and x, y can be v. 
Why is it better? Because now this equation would look like u times v equals to 6, which is easy. And this one would look like u times. Now, let's think about this. If you square x minus y, you will get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Now, you don't have minus 2xy, you have plus xy, which means it's x minus y squared minus 3xy, which is u squared minus 3v equals 19. Which is actually uv equals 6 and u cubed minus 3uv equals 19. Is this easier? Of course. uv can be substituted here. So it will be 3, which is 18. So u cubed would be what? Oh, I'm sorry. This should be plus. Because this is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And we need xy, so we have to add 3v. So it's plus. See, something is wrong here. So uv is 6, so u cubed is equal to 19 minus 18, which is 1. So u cubed is equal to 1. I just remember there should be some simple solution. That's why it struck me when you have minus here. It's definitely wrong. All right, from which we conclude that u is equal to 1. All right, if u is equal to 1, then v is equal to 6. So basically we have this. Now we go backwards. From uv, we go back to xy. And for xy, we have this system, which is very easily solvable. Um, x is equal to y plus 1, right? And I'll substitute it to this. I will have y squared plus y minus 6 equals to 0. Am I right? x is equal to 1 plus. So we substitute instead of x, one, y plus 1, we get y squared plus y, and 6 goes here. So we have what? y is equal to 2, and y is equal to minus 3, right? from which x is equal to 3, or x is equal to minus 2, right? y plus 1. So, this is one pair. This is another pair. Now, quite frankly, by definition of square root of p. Uh, square root of p is always arithmetic value, always positive thing. So we can actually completely ignore these and just consider these two things. So the solution is uh, to have square root of p is equal to 3 and square root of q equal to 2, from which p is equal to 9, and q is equal to 4. And these are solutions. Let's try to check it out. p is 9 times 2, that's 18, minus q is 4 times 3, 12, 18 minus 12, 6. Uh, this is 9 times 3, it's 27, minus 4 times 2, 8, 27 minus 8, 19. So, everything is fine. 
That's the end of it. I just want to spend maybe some time to these two values. I basically discarded the negative things, negative minus 3 and minus 2. Um, I think it's for a good purpose and we can always consider that this is the right thing. If you consider the negative things, then uh, your p still have to be 9 and q, I mean it's still the same thing. But that's not really what this particular problem meant. The problem meant that the square root of p is arithmetic value and uh, always positive. Okay, next one. x squared plus y equals 56. y squared plus x equals 56. Well, that's interesting. What's peculiar about this? Well, obviously symmetry of these things, and is it coincidence or not that they have the same number on the right? Well, if they have the same number and it's number like 56, I think the system is just asking for subtracting one from another to get zero on the right. So let's try to do it. x squared plus y minus y squared minus x equals to zero x squared minus y squared plus, um, let's do minus, minus x minus y equals to zero, right? Minus x plus y. Or x minus y x plus y, because that's what x squared minus y squared is. And x y goes to the right, it would be x plus y. Uh, x minus y, sorry. Mm. Now, that's much better, right? Well, first of all, maybe you can just reduce by x minus y and have x plus y is equal to 1, right? Well, yes and no. You can actually do this, but you have to check. Maybe x minus y is equal to 0. So maybe x is equal to y, and this is a solution. Well, let's try. What if x is equal to y? Or x minus y is equal to 0? Let's assume that this is the case, and let's just check. Well, if we will find the solution for one of them, obviously another will be exactly the same, because x is equal to y, right? So, let's try. x squared, and instead of y, we'll put x. Minus 56 equals 0. Right? So, solutions to this are minus 1 plus minus 1 plus 224, right? 4 times 50 is 200 plus 24, right? So it's square root of 225, which is 15, which is minus 1 plus minus 15 over 2, and we have the value of x is equal to if plus it's 16, it's 8, and x is equal to, uh, uh, sorry, it's minus 8, minus 8, and if it's plus, then it's 7, right? And y is also equal minus 8, and y is equal to 7. So we have one set, and we have another set. Well, let's just check, just in case. 8 squared would be 64, plus y, which is minus 8, which is 56. So it's correct. How about this? 7 squared is 49, plus 7 is 56. Correct. So we have these two solutions already, just by considering that x might, might be equal to y, and this would be satisfied. Now, another thing is... if the second one is x plus y is equal to 1. Because if that is satisfied, then this is also true. I mean, if we assume that x equals to y we have already taken care of, 
and x no longer is equal to y, then we can just reduce this and we will have x plus y equals to 1, right? So that's what I have here. Which means that y equals to 1 minus x substituted to this thing. So we will have x squared plus y, which is uh, minus x plus 1. I switched it equals to 55. Uh, so actually I can put plus, instead of plus 1 and equal 56, I will put minus 55. Right? Now, what will be in this case? Well, uh, so the solutions to this would be uh, 1 plus minus square root of 1 plus Uh, 220. Right? Y is equal to 1 minus x. So it will be x squared minus x plus 1 minus 55. Yeah, looks like it. Well, um, which basically means 1 plus minus square root of 221. Um, the square root is not exactly the nice number. Um, but in any case, um, from this value of x, we can always find out y, which is 1 minus x. And, uh, and then basically check if this particular uh, solution fits, fits our equations. Um, I think it would take a little bit more time for me to check, but you're welcome to do it yourself, and if it is a solution, it is. If not, that, that's true too. At least we found a couple of good solutions. Um, all right. Always, don't, don't, don't forget to do this checking. If I don't do it, it's just because to save some time, but you really have to do the checking. So this is the value of x. We have two different values, and with each of them, you will have the corresponding value of y. So you have 1 plus square root of 221 uh, divided by 2. That's x. And if y is 1 minus this, it would be 1 minus square root of 221 divided by 2. This would be another pair. And if x is equal to this, then y is equal to um, 1 minus this. It's 2, so it's 1 plus. That's another. But I didn't check these ones. You really should. OK, but that's how this particular system is solved. What's the lesson to be kind of learned from this? You see 56, 56, it just you know, kind of prompts you. Let's subtract it. And then something like this would definitely be very easy. So it's easy to, to reduce this system into this type of thing. And to two cases when x minus y is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 1. And then both cases are easily solvable. OK, the next one. looks more scary. Okay, here is the system. x plus a power of one-third plus y plus b power of one-third equals c x plus y equals d. Well, we do have, as you see, more or less general numbers a, b, c, and d. So, how to approach it. So I will basically <clears throat> talk about how to approach it, not the complete solution, because it's A, B, and C, and it will be really kind of a complicated thing. 
uh, if A, B, and C, and D are chosen in some specific way, then you might get some integer solutions, etc. I didn't do it. I wanted actually to show the approach how to do it rather than get to the concrete solution. But with any specific combination of A, B, and C, and D, you can definitely go down to the solution and basically do all the thing. But again, how to approach it? Well, what I suggest to do is the following. Let's just uh, raise the top to the third, to the power of three. Now, just for you to remember, if you have, let's say, P plus Q to a third degree, it would be P cube plus 3P squared Q plus 3P Q cube uh, squared plus Q cube. Now, I remember it, but you don't really have to remember it. You can always multiply P plus Q times P plus Q squared, which you probably do remember, P squared plus 2Q plus uh, Q squared, and you will get this formula. So that's easy to basically to, to get. Now, using this formula, which again, I don't want you to remember if you don't, you just always, um, uh, you, you always can, can derive it. Now, using this formula, and I'm raising the, uh, the top equation to the power of three. It will be the cube of the first one. Now, this is x plus a to the power of one third. If I will raise it to the power of three, it will be multiplication. Three times one third powers are multiplied. Remember this, right? p to the power m to the power of n is equal to p to the power of mn. Again, if you don't remember this, go to the previous lectures. Uh, so it will be the cube of the first plus 3 square of the first, which is x plus a. It was raised to the power 1 third, and then square, which is 2 thirds. Again, powers are multiplied. Uh, this remains as it is, plus 3, now uh, x plus a remains as it is, and y plus b is squared. And finally, y plus b, one-third to the third degree, which will be 1. So this is all equal to C. Now, what's important here is the following. You see x plus y? x plus y. So this is basically uh, a constant, d, right? So we can group together this x and this y, and we will get d. So let's just move all the constants to the right, and we will have 3 x plus a two-third, y plus b one-third, plus three x plus a one-third, y plus b two-third, equals c minus, minus a minus b and minus x plus a, x plus y, which is d. So it's minus a minus b minus d which is a constant, right? It's a known vector. Now, how can we this how can we simplify this? Well, this is kind of obvious because we can always do uh, factor out one third of both. And what will be left would be x plus a. We have one third and this is two thirds, so we will have x plus a to the power of one third, and from this we will have at y plus b to the power of one third. That would be in parentheses. Now remember this. So this is equal to c, from which we conclude that three times x plus a one third y plus b one-third equals c minus a minus b minus c divided by c, right? 
because this is because this is a C in the parentheses. So it's a known value, it's constant. Now, what actually again is like asking us to do, what is this equation is asking us to do? Obviously, raise to the power of three to get rid of this one third. Now both members, x plus y, x plus a, and uh, y plus b, both are in the, in the one third, in the power of one third. So if we will raise it to the power of three, we will get rid of this, get rid of this, it will be x plus 27, that's 3 to the power of 3, x plus a times a, y plus b, and that's c minus a minus b minus c over c to the power of 3. That's what we have reached, right? If we will raise this to the power of 3. Each one of them would be to the power of 3, and this to the power of 3. Well, this is almost there. Now, how to solve this? Well, easy. Now, this is easy. x plus a is equal to p, uh, y plus b is equal to q. So what I have is x plus y is equal to d, which means p plus q is equal to uh, a plus b plus d. And this is p times q equals to c minus a minus b minus c divided by c cube. Now, this is a system which is very easily solvable. It's a plain quadratic equation. You just substitute p uh, in terms of q, let's say, as a plus b plus d minus q into this, and you will get a quadratic equation for q. So, this is an approach, I didn't really reach the final conclusion, because the final conclusion would be a very big formula of A, B, C, and G. I don't want to do this. But the problem here is basically, you know, solved as far as the approach is concerned. That's how you approach this formula. And again, um, how did I guess? Well, my first intention was to get rid of this one-third, obviously. Um, and to get rid of the one-third as a power, you have to raise it to the power of three. And then, whatever, whatever happens, happens. In this case, something was, you know, relatively well uh, thought through, and uh, the cards fit. Um, okay, so basically I want to end this lecture on this note. Um, I, if, if time will allow me, I will try, <coughs> excuse me, I will try to put more problems of this type um, and, and, and solve them, maybe. May, may, and some of them will, will be probably as a, as a, a self exercise. Well, anyway, um, I hope it was interesting. And again, you have to really understand that the purpose of the whole course are these particular lectures where, where I'm trying to approach non standard, non trivial examples, which you really don't have the recipe. You have to look at the problem and find a particular solution which fits this particular problem. That's what develops your creativity. Thank you very much, and uh, don't forget that everything is on unizor.com, free uh, site where you can actually learn a lot. And uh, if you're registering, then you will actually have the opportunity to take exams and uh, have the whole course under control. Thank you very much.